And so finally, we're going to look in this development of leaders to the elder. This is the one uh, who's often called a pastor in a church. And this is, there are also in many churches a plurality of elders, where there is not just one, but there are many. And so um, Titus chapter 1 really gives a great description of the elder and those who would serve as an elder. And also, uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1 refers to this. And the elder literally means an old man, from the word presbyteros in the Greek, an old man like me. And then an overseer also means one who is responsible for the care of others, this is another term for the person who would be an elder in Scripture. And they're also called shepherds because if a person isn't a shepherd, they should not be serving as an elder. They are a learner. They're a laborer. They've been a leader, and now they serve as an elder in the local church. And one of the differences between a, a leader and an elder is that the difference between the 12 apostles and the seven that were appointed in Acts 6 the twelve had the oversight of the church. The seven had the operations. The twelve governed the overall purposes of the church. The seven governed a program to care for widows. The twelve guided the ministry of prayer. The seven had a specific ministry. The twelve guarded the ministry of the word. The seven did the ministry of managing a particular ministry. And so we need to ask, what is our process for affirming elders? How do we spot elders. And in Titus chapter 1, again, we're told at the very beginning, if, as we're looking for elders, to look at their family. Titus chapter 1 verse 6, an elder must be blameless, the husband of but one wife, a man whose children believe and are not open to a charge of being wild and disobedient. And so, um, again, just like with the leader, we're told to look at the family. Because if we need to focus on the family, we should not be trying to give oversight to the church. And then we're to look at their character. Titus chapter 1 verse 7 says, An overseer must be blameless, not overbearing, not quick-tempered, not given to drunkenness, not violent, not pursuing ga uh, dishonest gain. And the first of these is the one I want to highlight where it says they are not to be overbearing. This is a very important word because in the Greek it means literally to take pleasure in yourself, to be self-willed. And if a pastor or if a key leader of a local church is self-willed, then the way they work is they kind of think, well, I'm going to pray about this and I'm going to listen to the Lord and then I'm going to lead and everybody ought to follow because they trust so much in their own ability to lead, rather than having a sense of the importance of doing that, listening to the Lord, getting insight, but then bringing it to the other leaders to hear what they have to say. And so it's very important for leaders to share responsibility, to share insight, and for no one leader to try to be the dictator of a church. And then Titus chapter 1 verse 8 tells us to look at the person's friends in terms of who should be an elder. It says in verse 8, Rather he must be hospitable, one who loves what is good, is self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. The word hospitable is important for a person who would be a pastor or an elder of a local church. They must be hospitable. And what this word means in the Greek is it means to be a friend of strangers. 
You know, it destroys a church if the leaders are only friends with other leaders. If they're only friendly to people they know. If they only trust a little click of people. It says that those who would lead the local church as a pastor or an elder, they must be the friend of the stranger. They must be the first to welcome a person who comes to the church who has never been there before. They have to be willing to take the risk. They have to be willing to be hospitable and have people into their home that are not trusted friends from five or ten years. And this is one of the things we look for. And we look for the fact that they also love what is good. This word literally means to be a person who is generous and a supporter of all good causes. So the idea is that the pastor and the leaders of a church must be not only for the good of their own church, but also for all good causes. Whatever is happening in the community that is positive and good, they're for that. This is what Paul says we need to look carefully for when we're looking for a leader who would serve as an elder of the local church. And they must also handle the word of God. Titus 1 verse 7, they must hold firmly to the trustworthy message as it has been taught so he can encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. So that person who would serve as a pastor or an elder John Calvin said the pastor ought to have two voices, one for gathering the sheep and another for driving off wolves. And so it is that we encourage with sound doctrine. We refute those who are in opposition. This is one of the characteristics of those who would be elders in the local church. And when it comes to developing other elders, we're back to this idea in a sense of having someone that we work with individually bringing along these elders, oftentimes one-on-one, -on -one, meeting with them and building them and encouraging them um, in a personal relationship that's side by side. One of the ways that we describe this is the idea of coaching, being a, not a coach of a team, but like a personal trainer in a gym or like a life coach is sometimes it's called, where we come alongside a person and we get to know them, and we have a coaching relationship with them. That's one of the things that pastors and elders can do with emerging leaders to bring them into that final role of being an elder or pastor. Developing leaders is one of the most important things that a local church does. And I hope that this has given us a new understanding that it begins with the Great Commission that we're to make learners. And then we're to pray to the Lord of the harvest to raise up laborers. And then we're to be careful who we appoint to positions of leadership in the local church. And then we also are careful as to who is a pastor or an elder of the local church. And so we're careful not to bring children who are spiritually immature, but we seek to have churches where People can develop and grow and become all that God wants them to be. Have you benefited from our teaching ministry? Have you found TVS videos helpful and relevant? Please consider supporting us with your prayers and financial gifts. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com.